Good day everyone. In this video lecture, we will tackle about soil fertility and management. So we will focus um, the topic on some basic introduction about the soil fertility and management. So here's the outline of our video lecture for today. So we will discuss briefly the historical background of soil fertility. We will discuss the definition of soil fertility, the importance of soil fertility and conservation, and some basic concepts in plant nutrition. So let's begin with the historical background of soil fertility. In the past, during the time of our ancestors, a long, long time ago, cultivation of plants for food, allow humans to convert from a nomadic hunting and gathering lifestyle to a more settled one. So in the past, our ancestors tend to move from one place to another just to be able to find food until there came a time when they learned how to cultivate plants for food. According to the 2500 BC writings of Mesopotamia, now Iraq, the land between Tigris and Euphrates, it shows evidence of early civilization wherein fertility of the land was mentioned. And the fertility was due to annual flooding of the land and a system of canals that were built for irrigation of the crop. Before, there is what we call the shifting agriculture in the uplands, or also known as the slash and burn, in which large-scale deforestation was being practiced for agricultural use. After using the land for agriculture, people tend to abandon the land and look for another place to perform the slash and burn for agricultural purposes. One of the important personalities when it comes to the history of soil fertility is Xenophon. He is a Greek historian who first recorded the merits of green manure crops. He also wrote this quote, But then, whatever winds are upon the ground, being turned into the earth, and reach the soil as much as dung. Which means, incorporating weeds into soils is as good as applying them. During the Golden Age of Greeks from 800 to 200 BC, manure increased productivity and prolonged land use. So during this time, manure was discovered to uh, increase productivity and uh, prolonged land use. And also they discovered that green manure crops, for example, uh, for example, legumes can enrich the soil, and also liming increased productivity, and wood ashes and saltpeter are beneficial to plants, and that saline soils can be detected by taste. So all of these were discovered during 800 to 200 BC. Now, another important personality when it comes to history of soil fertility during the first 8th century AD is Pietro de Crescenzi. He is a Roman who published a book with the title Ruralia Commoda. This includes um, topics and agricultural practices, specifically about horticulture and agronomy. Another important personality is John Baptista van Helmont. He was uh, the one who conducted what we call the willow tree experiment. He used willow tree as a test crop and he grew the willow tree by the use of drinking water. And from his experiment, he concluded that the water was the sole nutrient of plants. Do you believe what?
he concluded about his experiment? I leave the answer to you. Another important personality is Jethro Tull. He thought that uh, soil small particles were ingested by plants or can be ingested or uptaken by plants. He says that cultivating the soil made it easier for the plants to take up soil particles. He is the author of the book with the title Force Hoeing Husbandry. He was the one who developed the horse hoe and the seed drill. And another important personality is Justice Von Liebig. Liebig is the father of modern fertilizer industry. He stressed the value of mineral elements from the soil. And he is the one who found that carbon in plants comes from carbon dioxide of the atmosphere and not from humus, and that hydrogen and oxygen come from water. He also found that alkaline metals such as the calcium, magnesium, and potassium were needed to neutralize acids formed by plants, and phosphates are necessary for seed formation. He also authored the what we call Liebig's Law of Minimum, which says that if one of the essential nutrients is deficient, growth will be poor even if all other elements are abundant. Liebig is also known for his contribution to philosophy. He said that perfect agriculture is the true foundation of all trade and industry. And it is the foundation of the riches of nations. But a rational system of agriculture cannot be formed without the application of scientific principles for such a system on an exact acquaintance with the means of vegetable nutrition and the knowledge we must seek through chemistry. Another important personality when it comes to the history of soil fertility is um, James E. Oglethorpe. He established the first agriculture experiment station in America on 1733, which became the stores of grapes, mulberry trees, oranges, olives, and other plants on that time. We also have Benjamin Franklin. Benjamin Franklin has 300 acre farm in New Jersey. He had a miniature experiment station carrying on projects in drainage, in crop rotation, and especially in the utilization of the newer grasses, liming, and fertilization. He is the one also who demonstrated the value of the use of gypsum during his time. We also have Thomas Jefferson. He is a soil conservationist. His practices such as crop rotation, use of fertilizer, and winter plowing characterized him as one of the America's early agronomists. We also have Edmund Ruffin. He is the father of soil chemistry in the United States. He showed how to restore fertility to depleted southeast plantations. And he also the, he's also the one who first used lime in humid regions. So, so much for the brief history of soil fertility. Now we move to the discussion of the definition of soil fertility and what is what is the difference between when you say soil fertility versus soil productivity. When you say soil fertility, it refers to the quality 
of a soil that enables it to provide essential chemical elements in quantities and proportions for the growth of specified plants. On the other hand, when you say soil productivity, it refers to the capacity of a soil for producing a specified plant or sequence of plants under a specified system of management. And soil fertility is one of the factors that can make a soil productive. Now, for soil to be productive, it must have the following characteristics. It must be easily tillable and fertile. It must contain all the essential elements in the forms readily available to plants in sufficient amount and is physically good to support plants and has the right amount of water and air for the proper growth of the plants. And the soil must supply these essential elements in the life of the plant. Now, other factors that can make a soil productive are the following. You have to consider the moisture content, the aeration, the absence of pests and diseases, the presence of microorganisms that support plant growth, the management practices, and also large amount of topsoil. Now, what are the differences when you say the soil is fertile versus the soil is productive or what is, well, how can you compare soil fertility and soil productivity? Now, these are some of us uh, examples on how you compare the two. Now, you can say that the soil can be highly fertile. For example, it has ready supply of nutrients in available form, yet it may not be highly productive. Why is that so? Example, waterland soils may be highly fertile but may not produce good crop because of unfavorable physical conditions. So it can be, uh, the soil can be, can have lots of nutrients but because of water logging, it may not be productive anymore. Another, another example is that a fertile soil may be highly saline or alkaline, which may not be also good for agriculture. Another example is that sandy soil. Sandy soil may be poor in fertility, but with the use of fertilizers in water, it may become productive. It may be made productive. Now, you can say that there is no standard for either fertility or productivity of the soil because both depend upon the crops to be grown. For example, soil that is productive for potatoes may not be necessarily be productive for certain other crops. So that's for the differences between soil productivity and soil fertility. Now, let's discuss the importance of soil fertility and conservation. So why is soil fertility important? Because soil plays an essential part in our survival since it is connected to our food supplies. Fertile soils ensure plant survival. It holds plants in place while providing them with the life-supporting nutrients that they need to survive. And plants ensure our survival. The food or the nutrients that all living organisms, including us humans, need in order to survive comes immediately or indirectly from plants. So, without fertile soil, there will be no more, no, there will be no plants. Without plants, we cannot survive. We would not have food. 
and without food, there's no chance you can survive at all. Now, why is soil conservation important? Soil conservation can save the soil through harsh weather and stops erosion. Soil conservation ensures that the soil is getting more nutrients. And as we all know, humans depend on food grown for survival. So if we take good care of our soils, we will have suitable lands to grow our food and meet our most basic needs. It can also increase crop productivity because a healthy soil means healthier and better crops. So we can harvest better and healthier crops as I said. So now, let's go to some basic concepts in plant nutrition. Now, in plant nutrition, we have what we call essential nutrient elements. So these essential nutrient elements are needed for the growth and development of plants. There are actually 18, 18 nutrient elements that are considered essential for plant growth and development. And these are classified into two. The first classification we have is the macro elements. So we have the macro elements. So when we say macro elements, they are needed by the plants in large quantities or large amounts. So for the macro elements, we have those coming from the air, the carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. And we have those coming from the soil the nitrogen, the phosphorus, potassium, calcium, magnesium, and sulfur. So these macro elements coming from the soil can be in the form of compounds or in combination with other compounds. They can be present in the complex structure of minerals in the soil, and they can also be present in salts in the soil solution. So those are the macro elements, the, the carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, calcium, magnesium, and sulfur. So aside from the macro elements, the other classification is the micro elements. So micro elements are those needed by plants in uh, relatively small quantities, smaller quantities than the macro elements. So micro elements include iron, manganese, copper, zinc, boron, molybdenum, cobalt, fluorine, and nickel. Some of these elements have a, a special special role in plants. For example, uh, chlorine. They are needed specifically for by coconuts. We also have nickel, which is a very important catalyst in the conversion of urea to ammonium. So there are also other nutrient elements that are beneficial for plants. So some plants apparently either need or have some benefits from other elements. So examples are the following. Silicon, sodium, iodine, fluorine, barium, and strontium. They are not generally considered to be essential elements for plant growth, but they are beneficial. Now, how are these nutrients considered to be essential? And not beneficial only. So to be to be classified as an essential nutrient, it should meet the element should meet this three criteria. The first criteria is that plants cannot complete their life cycle in the absence or deficiency 
of any one of the nutrient elements. So without, for example, nitrogen, plants cannot complete their life cycle. Plants cannot grow. And the other, or the second criteria is that the nutrient is an integral component of a plant structure and or participates in one or more metabolic processes in the plant. So when you say metabolic processes, it includes what we call the photosynthesis, the respiration, the transpiration, so those metabolic processes needs essential elements to be able to proceed. And the third one is that no other element can substitute for the element if it is absent or lacking in supply. So there is no substitute. It cannot be subs its, uh, its role in plant growth and development cannot be substituted by others. Its deficiency uh, can only be corrected by addition of that particular nutrient. Now, let's go for some practice questions. So I'll be giving you oh, some time to answer these questions on your own, and after that, we'll check your answers. Now, first question. In history, star fertility in Mesopotamia was due to A. Annual flooding of the land. B. Annual precipitation in the land. C. Application of fertilizer. Or D. Application of lime. Number two, shifting agriculture in the uplands tends to A. Increase soil fertility B. Decrease soil fertility C. Increase soil productivity and D. Both A and C. Next question. A Greek historian who said that incorporating weeds into soils is as good as applying dung. Letter A. Pijanzi. B. Libi or Libi. C. Tool. And D. Xenophon. Next, he said that water was the sole nutrients of plants. Letter A, Franklin. Letter B, Vick. Letter C, Van Helmont. And D, Tull. Number five. It refers to the quality of a soil that enables it to provide essential chemical elements in quantities and proportions for the growth of specified plants. Letter A, soil fertility, B, soil health, C, soil productivity, and D, soil quality. Next question. A soil that is fertile is always productive. This statement is A. True. B. False. C. Neither A or B. D. Either A or B.
Next question. The capacity of a soil for producing a specified plants or a sequence of plants under a specified system of management refers to A. Soil capacity B. Soil health C. So soil productivity and D. Soil quality Next question. The following are micronutrients. Exam. A. Calcium, magnesium, sulfur. B. Cobalt, chlorine, nickel. C. Iron, manganese, copper. D. Zinc, boron, molybdenum. So let's try now to answer those questions. For question number one. In history, soil fertility in Mesopotamia was due to letter A, annual flooding of the land. Number two, shifting agriculture in the uplands Tends to decrease soil fertility. Next, a Greek historian who said that incorporating weeds into the soils is as good as applying dung. Letter D, Xenophon. Number four, he says that water was the sole nutrients of plants. He is letter C, Van Helmont. Number five, refers to the quality of a soil that enables it to provide essential chemical elements in quantities and proportions for the growth of specified plants. The answer is soil fertility. Number six, a soil that is fertile is always productive. This statement is false. Number seven, the capacity of a soil for producing specified plants or a sequence of plants under a specified system of management. The answer is soil productivity. Number eight, the following are micronutrients. Exactly. Letter A, calcium, magnesium, and sulfur. That's all for this video lecture. Thank you very much for listening.